Well, hi. Uh, you may recall last time we were talking about this machine and set up and the Mr. Bullet Feeder and all that sort of thing. We had moved from the 9mm machine over to this 22 caliber for 5.56. And we ran into a problem with the Mr. Bullet Feeder uh, switch system. The uh, bullets were just not heavy enough to reliably trigger the switch each time. So came up with the notion that we could use a proximity sensor, and that is something that will detect the presence of metal and then electrically do things for us and whatnot. And <clears throat> turned out this worked quite well. Uh, actually, what I did was I took the Mr. Bullet Feeder, um, what do you call this part? I forget. Anyway, this is the part that goes in between the spring feed and the actual die itself down here. And um, it has the switch in it normally. So I had to modify it a little bit. I had to drill out so uh, we could put the sensor. I had to go down inside so as to, you know, reach close enough to the bullet to, to trigger. So I had to do a lot of drilling and all that kind of stuff there. Well, it worked, uh, but I had to use this uh, PVC fitting, which comes down over the thing and lines up in there. And that was where you could thread this thing in. Only I never was able to get the threads to really work right. These are 18 millimeter metric threads and pipe fittings come in American pipe sizes. And, they ain't the same, and, you know, trying to get all that to work involved putting painter's tape on it and one thing, and it was it was just kind of a kludge. So I went to work on it with the uh, idea of printing something in 3D, and I, a lot of you are probably well familiar with this, and others may not be, but in the nutshell is you you create something using CAD software and you create a model and then that model gets printed using melted plastic and it prints it up layer by layer and you can print pretty much any kind of shape. Well, I don't, I don't have a, a 3D printer, uh, but that doesn't matter because there are plenty of people out there who will gladly print these things for you and for a reasonable fee. So I came up with this design right here, and this was my first one, and, and um, as you can see, its its purpose was to replace, was to replace that. And it has the part up on top, well, let's get this all right. There's a part up here on top that matches that, uh, which, would allow the spring part to fit down on it, the tube that feeds from above. On the bottom, this, this part down here uh, fits onto the die, the actual bullet feeding die, and so I had to make, make this part match it. And then in the middle, I had to have a tube that would um, feed the 22 bullets, and, uh, and then on the side, a threaded place where you could and actually thread it with 18 millimeter threads where you could screw this thing on here. And oh boy, it works. Well, I ran into a few problems with it. First and foremost was that I made the hole in here too big. Um, I, I goofed and um, I was trying to allow a little extra, and so what would happen then is the bullets, we'll pretend these cartridges are bullets. What you really want is for them to stack up like that. But what was happening was that they were getting cocked over like that and jamming up. So it was uh, a, a problem with that. On the other hand, this one works perfectly with six millimeter, six and a half millimeter, and seven millimeter bullets. It won't quite work with 30 caliber bullets, which would be obviously the one you'd really need it for, for 308. But 
it would just be a matter of the, the diameter of the hole. So I don't do 308 on any of these machines, so I don't really have a need for that. But <clears throat> if I did, it would be a very simple matter of getting another one of these printed with a bigger hole inside. And, um, oh, the cost, it's about 20 bucks for this. And this one was printed with a process um, that's not the most common process like you see when people have these machines in their homes, uh, the kind of hobbyist type machines. This is a, from a machine that's made by Hewlett Packard and it's, it's huge. It's a, it's a very industrial kind of thing. Looks like it would probably cost two, three hundred thousand dollars, literally. And so the companies that, you know, invest in it do, but you, you get this really high quality part. It's made from nylon, and as an as a test, this one I got was just the raw nylon, unfinished, and you may can tell that when you handle it, it picks up stains and stuff. Not that that matters at all. But anyway, I went back to the drawing board, and I came up with this one. This is a, 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 a kind of an improved version. You, you pay for these things by the amount of plastic. They don't care what shape it is. That has no effect on the cost for the most part. And it's just how much plastic do you have? And I had quite a bit up in here, had it made it kind of bulky and down in here. And so, as you can see, there's a big difference, but this still has the same opening in the bottom. This was overbuilt as I tend to do things. You probably figured that out. Uh, this one was absolutely perfect in every way. The bullets stacked up inside the 22 caliber bullets. Everything was perfect, but for one flaw, and that was I only made it deep enough to get that much thread in there. And that's enough. It will actually work, but I wasn't 100% satisfied with that, so I went back and added a little bit over here. Well, that led to the final final version of it, which you see right here. And um, let's get this out of the way. Uh, here you can see how it's threaded. And it threads into it just like that first one I showed you, many, many turns. In fact, it will go so far that it will block the bullets, which is not a big deal. You just, it's kind of neat. You go in until it blocks them, then back off until they start sliding through and you're perfect. Uh, and it can back up about three turns from there and still work. <laughs> so that that's great. Um, well, you can see how the, the little spring connector slides onto it perfectly. This is, this is where the bullets feed down from the hopper up above. I put a little groove in here for the set screw to catch on. And, uh, and you really don't, I mean, it's a tight fit right there. It wouldn't come off probably, but with just the least little bit, it absolutely won't come off. Now, let's see, make sure it's all off. Let me dump the bullets out of it. Okay. Um, you can see down here at the bottom, we've got a set screw that locks it to the bullet feeder die. Let me take that off, move it back out of the way. And these are the actual bullet feeder dies, and um, the case goes up into it, actuates it, and it drops a single bullet down into, into the case each time. And these dies are specific to caliber. So you would have one, you'd have to have one of these for nine millimeter, one for 45, one for 22, 308, et cetera. So uh, this, is, this is a die that you have to buy. It's a um, separate deal. The die is not to be confused with this feeder uh, mechanism here which is also bullet specific. And most of the time they're kind of bought as a package. But in this case, you could buy the die separate, just a 22 die, and then get the 3D printed part. Put it on here, oops. And put your set screw down on it. 
didn't get quite as tight a fit down there as I did on top, but yeah, you know, I can fine tune that next time. It works great. I mean, it's absolutely, absolutely perfect. I want to try to demonstrate for you how it works. Um, you, you, I hope, can see that there is a little red light right here on the bottom. This, this light simply an indicator, and what it's saying is that the sensor is not sensing anything. When the sensor senses, then the light goes off. And what you'll notice is when the bullets come in, come feeding down through this tube and come down into the thing, this will blink each time a bullet goes by. Eventually, you'll see the bullets stacking up inside here. And when they get to the top, the light will stay off because the bullet will stay there and that will stop the activity. Let's see if I can get a little more slack in this cable here to bring it on around. Just a little bit more. Yeah, I think you can see it now. All right, what I'm gonna do is turn on the Mr. Bullet Feeder. This, every time that light goes off, turns off the Mr. Bullet Feeder. But since it only blinks as they're going by, it really doesn't interrupt it until you get to the very last one. You see it blink when they go by. I don't know. I hope you can. And you'll see them. Oop, there they go. Filled it up and it stopped at the end. Now, if I put a case under here and drop out one, uh, you're just going to have to take my word for it. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, I dropped out one and it came on uh, long enough to, to actuate it. So I'll do another one. And here's the bullet, and you see how it turns on each time. If you drop out you know, like a handful of them, it will run until they are replenished. Okay, now you can see the whole thing. I'm gonna dump all the bullets, and you'll see them. There they go, flying by. And then they will begin to stack up now. And then the next one, yep, turned it off. So that's how it works, and that's the name of that tune. Pull this one out. You'll need one of these, a little uh, power wall wart. Uh, and, and originally, when I was doing this, I said you had to have a 12 volt. And I can't see what I'm doing here. Put a towel up here to try to make it a little easier to see. Uh, I, you don't have to have 12 volts. Uh, this sensor will work on anything from about 5 to 35 volts. The relay is rated for 12. The one I've got on there nine, now is 9. So I know it will work with a 9 volt. Uh, I know it works with 12. It probably would work with 15 or something like that equally well. That is just simply the circuit between the sensor and the relay. The Mr. Bullet feeder has its own power supply and we don't affect that at all. Now, some of you who know about sensors may have been thinking, well, a sensor is just a switch. Why don't you just use the, the, the switch in here to turn Mr. Bullet Feeder on and off instead of turning a relay on and off? That's a good question, and you could, sort of. But the problem, there are two problems. One, the, the, the sensors can handle varying amounts of current. These are about as much as you can get, which is about 300 milliamps. And the motors for the Mr. Bullet Feeder can pull more than that if they stall. The power supply for the Mr. Bullet feeder is limited to about 900 milliamps. So, and that, that's to prevent any kind of problem, burnout with the motor if it's stalled or whatever. But that would be three times more than the sensor could take. So you'd probably burn it out, almost guaranteed. But even if it weren't for that, you have a problem because the Mr. Bullet feeder has a variable speed control. And it works by varying the voltage from nothing up to about 
I guess 12 volts. And so there's a good chance at the low speeds, which we typically run it at because it doesn't really have to run all that fast to keep up with you. And the slower it goes, the smoother it goes, and the better the feeding and all that kind of thing. So if you run it, if you're running it at um, you know three or four volts, it's just not going to work. I mean, even at five or six, the sensor might, but I doubt if the the relay coil would be reliable. It might, but the, anyway, that's a problem that we don't have to worry about. Plus, and this is a very, very big deal, you don't have to modify the Mr. Bullet feeder at all. None. Zero. Nada. And the reason for that is Mr. Bullet feeder has this springy wire right here that comes down and normally connects to this switch right here and it just plugs on and you can pull them off pull them off with your fingers or pliers put them back on they, they, they just go on and off well those are the only wires that we're using in this circuit and the relay has the same plug or poles on it or whatever, lugs or whatever these are called tabs connector points they're the same i think they're quarter inch and the Mr. Bullet feeder cable just plugs right onto the relay, just like it plugged onto here. So, not a big deal. It's not hard to do. And uh, thanks for watching.